You know how Camera Raw, as well as Lightroom, lets you apply lens blur to simulate depth of field? Well, I figured out how you can capture that AI-enabled depth map and use it back inside Photoshop to do whatever you want. In other words, what you're about to see is a hack, and a very exciting, effective one at that. As you may know, Photoshop by way of Camera Raw allows you to apply an entirely synthetic lens blur effect to an image. This is true for Lightroom as well. Notice that it's not part of the photograph. And it does so with the help of one of the most practical applications of AI across the entire creative cloud and it goes by the name visualize depth and my job in this video is to show you how to hack this information that you're seeing on screen right now and turn it into a practical depth map inside photoshop and by the way i'm not by way of demonstration going to show you how to create a lens blur effect because you can already do that right out of the bag inside of Camera Raw or Lightroom. Instead, I'm gonna show you how to take this photograph from the Dreamstime image library, link in the description, and we are going to very gently and very meticulously and very accurately account for atmospheric haze. Now you may say, hey Deke, I don't know if you're aware, there's another feature inside Camera Raw, really easy to use, it's called dehaze. You just wiggle it back and forth and it does the trick quite handily. Actually, not so. Dehaze does not employ AI. It is absolutely unaware of the contents of a photograph. It doesn't know foreground from background. It does affect the shadows and dark midtones more than the highlights, but otherwise it's a pretty simple control and it frequently disappoints as I'm about to demonstrate. And so notice these kayakers right here. Let's say they're about a stone's throw away way. So they're in the foreground. They're not really affected by atmospheric haze. And as a result, we have lots of good contrast as well as saturation. However, once we get to this village back here, I guess it's in Switzerland, then we're about 20 stones throws away and we do have atmospheric haze. And I don't mean anything romantic like mist or fog or anything like that, just air, possibly a little vapor rising off the lake. However, as a result, we're losing contrast, we're losing saturation. Things get even worse when we get into the mountain forest zone right here, as well as these clouds in the very far background. Now, if this is the kind of stuff you love then definitely take a moment to subscribe because this is the kind of obsessive detail I engage in every single week. In fact, note that I have a control image right here. And so I'll go up to the filter menu and choose camera raw filter. And then I will click on effects so that we can see that dehaze option. Now you can reduce it if you want to add haze. I don't think it works very well for that particular purpose, but notice if you increase the value, it is impacting the foreground and background of the image equally. And so notice that we are increasing the contrast of the kayakers like crazy at this point. We're probably blowing shadows and highlights. That is clipping and we have way too much contrast. Now things look pretty good where the village is concerned. I'd say we have too much contrast here, but I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit. You can see that we are losing contrast if anything in this mountainous forest. Now I've got dehaze cranked way up. You wouldn't normally take it this high. So I'll take it down to still a very high value of plus 50 and click OK. And now notice the difference. This is before and this is after all parts of the image that is from the top left corner to the bottom right corner all around the image all the pixels are affected to some degree or other. Compare that to my custom dehaze solution right here. It's just a brightness contrast layer and nothing more. One of the simplest adjustment layers inside Photoshop. However, notice if I were to zoom in, I am not affecting the kayakers, not at all. Notice that they are staying exactly the same. And so I'll just go ahead and zoom out a little bit so you can see that the village is being accounted for quite nicely. This is before low contrast. This is after very nice contrast without too much saturation. And we have a good deal of contrast going on inside the mountainous forest as well. Now, some of you might think, well, gosh, you could apply this, couldn't you? Just using 
a gradient mass because after all, it's going to be a bright foreground and a dark background or vice versa, actually. However, notice this mask is quite... Uh, 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 quite more complicated. How about that? And you can see that we have actual kayaks involved in this mask, and we have homes in the village as well, as well as uh, down to individual trees in that mountainous forest. And that's the kind of stuff we can accomplish that we can achieve using that visualize depth effect. And so here's how it works. I'm going to go ahead and start in a flat image. I could be working with a smart object, of course, but I'm just going to choose camera raw filter. And then I am going to click on lens blur. Now this is the most painful step because after you click apply, very necessary, you've got to wait for it to apply. And if this is the first time you're doing it, it may take a hot moment or two. In my case, I've done this several times in advance of recording this video. And so leave everything set the way it is. Notice we do have a lens blur effect. I don't care about that. That's not going to affect our next step. So just leave this stuff alone. Please do. Turn on visualize depth. That's what you want. And you're going to get this crazy colorful depth map right here that is showing the near stuff in more or less white, so monochrome bright. And then we go into the yellows and the oranges where the kayakers are concerned. Things get more and more red and then purple. And then we have some neutral colors up here in the clouds. Now what you want to do, you don't have to do this step, but it's generally a good idea. It does change the composition of some images. This focus range area, just go ahead and drag this left edge all the way over to the left. Don't think that's changing things the way you're seeing it until you release. So pretty much the, 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 the colors go back to the way they were before, but things can change a little bit. If I drag this right edge all the way over to the right hand side and notice up here in the top right corner, we're not seeing really any purples until I predict now. Yeah, there they are. And so you may get a slight distinction. Now here is the hacky part. What you got to do is take a screenshot so it's pretty brain dead and if you like you can zoom into a hundred percent if you want something really accurate and then try to stitch it together but starting wide is just fine hey real quick correcting for atmospheric haze isn't the only thing you can do with a depth map want to see more as well as a more sophisticated way of distilling that colorful visualized depth image into the mask of your dreams then join my patreon which is patreon.com slash deek now. And now back to dehazing like a real pro in Photoshop. I'm fitting the image on screen as you can see right here. And so on a PC, all you have to do is press print screen, by the way, and then just make sure that you're working in the rectangular mode. You can also press, what is it? Windows Shift S if you prefer. And this part I got to do carefully and you want to do it carefully as well. Go ahead and exactly to the best of your ability, select that visual representation of the depth map. And by the way, if you can't quite get it, you can make it too big and then shave out some parts when you paste it into Photoshop. You do need it to be in the clipboard. So on the Mac you press, and this is just the way it works by default, Command Control Shift 4. Or if you want to get fancy, then you can press Command Shift 5 and that'll give you a kind of control panel and you can work from there. Anyway, it's up to you to understand your operating system, obviously. Shoot it to the clipboard, then press Shift Escape in order to close Camera Raw. And now what you want to do, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here and you want to paste that guy in by pressing Control V or Command V on the Mac. And now we want to transform it so it's as big as the image itself. And so the easiest way to do that is should just press Control T, Command T on the Mac for free transform or enabled with the rectangular marquee tool right here. You can right click and choose free transform like so. Enabled with, who says that? Anyway, I'll go ahead and drag this edge and this one as well. And as long as things are scaling proportionally as by default, so that's the width and height values are linked together, then you will get a snap like so. And it looks like this and that is absolutely great. Now I might just go ahead and name it, you know, visualize or something like that. So I remember where it came from, but here's the trick. How do you make sense of these colors? How do they align with anything? Well, you go to the channels panel 
by the way, at which point you'll see red, green, and blue channels, assuming you're working in the RGB mode. Now, blue is not going to be of much use. Notice that it fades in and out where the luminous levels are concerned. You want a continuous ramp going on. And the best way to achieve that, you can try out the green channel, by the way, but red is going to be your best bet. So just go ahead and grab red and make a copy of it by dragging it and dropping it onto that little plus icon. And then go ahead and call this guy red invert because that's what you want to do. You want to invert it by pressing control I or command I on a Mac. That way the bright stuff is the stuff we're going to be working on that we're going to bring into greater clarity in just a moment. And the dark stuff is the stuff we're going to leave alone, like the kayakers. Now, at this point, we're still going to be affecting the kayakers too much. And so what I recommend you do is go up to the image menu, choose adjustments and levels or curves. Totally up to you. I'm going to go with curves for this one because I want to brighten things up. So I'll drag this guy over to basically kind of the beginning of the histogram. See that I'm changing the input value to 225 and I'm going to drag this guy way over so that I'm starting at the beginning of the histogram actually well into it so that the kayakers are protected they need to be blackish not or dark gray at the very least so input for me is 80 and then I want to add a little bit more contrast between the sky and the mountains right there so I'll click to set a point right here and what I came up with I'm just going to dial in the value I came up with an input of 210 and and uh, input, I'm sorry, an output and an input of 210 both so that the curve bows down just ever so slightly. And now we have more contrast up here. Click OK and I've got what I need. Now to load that up as a selection outline so you can employ it, you need to press the control key or the command key on the Mac. Notice you get a little finger with the marquee and click. So that's a control or a command click in order to load that guy up as a selection outline. Then go back to the RGB composite, switch to the layers panel and turn off that visualize depth layer because you don't need it anymore. And then I'll go ahead and drop down to the black white icon at the bottom of the layers panel so I can choose brightness contrast. You can go your own way. You can try levels or curves or exposure. It doesn't matter. Anyway, watch this. This is so easy. I'm going to crank the contrast value up to 100. And you may look at that and say, Deke, that's not enough. That's doing kind of something where the village and the mountainous forest are concerned. But I can get even more contrast by applying the first and foremost of the contrast blend modes overlay. And that is going to do a terrific job. Notice that this is before and this is after. That is without and with. And then you want to take the brightness value, if you're working this way, down to taste. And I just came up with negative 50. I'm just trying to, you know, go with some even values here. And you can see this is without and this is with. And we're not affecting the kayakers at all. And we are affecting the village beautifully, as you can see. And that is a function of the fact I'm using one of the simplest adjustment layers in all of Photoshop, brightness contrast, along with a depth map that I extracted, that I hacked right out of camera raw. And so what do you think? Let me know, comment below. And then subscribe and turn on notifications. And for more stuff that you can do with camera raw's colorful visualized depth preview inside Photoshop, join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my equally colorful newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.